Hey guys, so today I thought it would be fun to update you on my top two makeup products in every category. So this was a video that was kind of going around on YouTube last summer, I think, and it was started by Julia Adams MUA. Um, I think she did a top three in every category. I ended up doing a top two just because I do have a fairly small collection, so I felt like I wanted to narrow it down a little bit further. And it was almost six months ago that I did my original version of this video, and I thought it would be fun to revisit and kind of see what's changed, what's stayed the same, since then. Many of the products that are my current top two I've had for a while, like since even before I filmed the original video. Some of them are new to me as well, but these are really just the products that I've been reaching for the most in each category, the products that I've been loving the most. I think I might start doing these videos maybe like every three to six months or so, just whenever I feel like I'm due for an update because I like this format. Kind of like a different take on a favorites video. I don't really do like monthly favorites videos on my channel. Um, I feel like this is a little bit more like intentional and really taking a look at my collection as a whole and not, not focusing necessarily on new items, really just looking at what I've been loving, what I've been using. So anyway, let me know if you guys do enjoy this type of video and I can continue doing it or if there's some other way you might like to see me present favorites on my channel, I'm happy to hear that as well. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's actually start with primer. I don't think I did primer last time because primer's never really been a big part of my routine, at least in recent months and the past like year or so, but I do have two that I want to mention, one of them actually being a sunscreen. This is a sunscreen that really doubles as a primer, and most days my sunscreen is my primer. I don't normally go in with like a separate makeup primer, but this is so good and this makes a great base for underneath makeup. It's the Everyday by Unsun Mineral Tinted Face Sunscreen Lotion with SPF 30, and I have the light to medium shade. I used to actually have the medium to deep shade because that was, I think that was the only shade they sold there for a while, and I really, really liked the formula. It was definitely too dark for me, but I made it work. Like underneath makeup, it was okay, but this shade is perfect for me. Um, it's got this kind of neutral, almost grayish beige color to it. I think it would be great especially for like cool undertones, but it really just blends in to my skin to look pretty much invisible. And it does dry down to a matte finish. Now, I'm not always a fan of matte products or having a matte finish on my face, but this product, even though I have somewhat dry skin, I feel like it doesn't accentuate any dryness. Even if I have some slight dry patches going on, this just kind of smooths them over and it just gives my skin this beautiful, smooth, like velvety canvas. And I feel like this, because of that matte, almost like oil controlling finish, it really does help my foundation and my makeup just wear a little bit longer throughout the day. So I don't always opt for this. Some days I do still prefer a glowy sunscreen, but even as a dry skin person, I really enjoy having this product. I do treat it as kind of like a sunscreen and a makeup primer in one, although I do often wear it on its own on no makeup days as well. The other primer is like a true primer that I did want to mention because this is a really good primer. When I do use a primer, this is the one that I've been going for. This is the e.l.f. Jelly Pop Dew Primer. This is kind of both a hydrating and a gripping primer in one, and it's the first really gripping primer I've ever tried, so I don't have much to compare it to, but I can definitely see why so many people like this. It is a little bit sticky, but it's not like super tacky and sticky to the point where it's like uncomfortable or anything. I think that's just enough to kind of like adhere to your makeup, and there's also something very smoothing about this as well. I The other day I did my friend's makeup and I used this on her and I really felt like I noticed a difference in how her foundation went on. I also feel like it kind of helps if you do have dry patches, just kind of smooth over those. And throughout the day, your makeup's gonna just wear a little bit better, especially in those dry areas. So if you're looking for a good primer, I definitely think this is worth checking out. All right, so starting with foundation, my current top two are actually both different from the two that I mentioned in September. And I think these are both new to my collection since then. But the first one is the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Hydrating Foundation. I think I tried this in October, so shortly after I filmed my first top two in every category, and I quickly fell in love with this. This actually ended up being in my 2021 favorites video. Even though I really discovered it towards the end of 2021, it still was good enough to be included in my 2021 yearly favorites. This, this is just such a good foundation. I feel like it would work for a lot of different people. It has really strong medium coverage, a kind of more like satin finish. They call it a hydrating foundation, which might make you think that it's gonna be dewy, but it's really more of just like a soft satin matte type of finish. 
This makes my skin look like porcelain, like just smooth, perfected, blurred. Like it doesn't look so blurred and perfected that it looks fake or anything. It still looks very skin-like, but just like really, really, really good skin. I was definitely late to the party on this, but I'm so glad that I tried it. I'm already like halfway through this bottle and I've only had it for like four or five months. So yeah, highly recommend this if you haven't tried it yet. And I do wear the shade 30N in this and it is the perfect shade match. All right, so my other favorite foundation is very new to my collection. It is actually the newest foundation to my collection, but it has very quickly become a favorite. Um, and this is the new Kosas Revealer Skin Improving Foundation. I did a wear test on this and I, I told you guys I would update you on my thoughts. Consider this the update. I adore this foundation. This is what I'm wearing today. So if you've been here for a while, you might remember that for the longest time, my holy grail foundation was the Physician's Formula Healthy Foundation. And I've kind of been low key on the hunt for a dupe for that for a while. And up until now, I haven't really found a true dupe until this. Now obviously the price point is very different. I think this retails for around $40, $42. Physicians Formula One is closer to like $15 or $16. So there is an obvious price difference, but I think I actually like this one better. This one I do feel like wears better and more gracefully throughout the day. It also has SPF 25 in it, which the Physicians Formula one also has SPF in it. And the look on the skin, at least from what I remember of the Physicians Formula, I haven't had that one in my collection in probably a year now, but from what I remember, the finish is pretty much the same, just that very nice natural finish. It's not overly dewy, but it's not matte. It's just, it just looks like your skin, but better, and does have a little bit of a blurring quality. It will fade slightly throughout the day, but it does so in a very graceful, kind of smooth way. It's not gonna look patchy or obvious. And that's, I think, the difference between this and the Healthy Foundation is that the Healthy Foundation, by the end of the day, it would look kind of rough, like after like a long day of wear. But this, I'm, I still feel presentable by the end of the day, even though it has uh, worn off a little bit, especially if I've been wearing a mask or like rubbing my face or anything. So I am just so, so happy to have this foundation and... I think I'm gonna be getting a, a lot of use out of it this year. But as much as I have been loving this one, I also used the ColourPop one the other day and I was still, I was blown away all over again at how good it looked on my skin. So if you don't wanna spend this amount of money on a foundation, I think the ColourPop one is fantastic as well. It's just different. I think the ColourPop one has a little bit higher coverage. It's a little bit more on the matte side than the Kosas one. And if you've got like super, super dry skin, you might not love the ColourPop one, but I really do think that this could work for so many people and it's a very, a much more affordable foundation. So really highly recommend both of these, but they do both just achieve a slightly different purpose for me. All right, next for the category of concealer, the first one is a repeat from last time. I'm still loving this one. I think I've been loving this one for about a year now. It's the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer. This is just such a reliable concealer for me at this point. It always looks good on my under eyes. It doesn't make my under eyes look dry, but it has really good coverage. It's kind of like a perfect happy medium between hydrating and skin-like, but also still offering really good coverage. So still loving this, still highly recommend. I think I'm almost like halfway through mine. And I wear the shade Light Ivory in that one. All right, my other favorite concealer is the Kosas Revealer Concealer. <laughs> I guess I'm just fully on board with the Kosas Revealer train now, but this one I did try a little bit earlier than the foundation. I got this during the Kosas Black Friday sale. And honestly, I didn't expect to love it as much as I do. I mean, obviously I expected to like it because I bought it, but I, I wasn't sure if it would end up being a favorite or not, but I really do see what the hype is all about with this. There's just something so creamy about this formula, but not in like an overly emollient, heavy sort of way. Sometimes creamy can almost verge on like thick and tacky, if you know what I mean, but this, I don't know, it just magically like becomes one with my skin and there was one day that I was wearing this and I looked in the car mirror, which is always the true test. Like that's when you know how your makeup actually looks. And I was just like, wow, my under eyes look really good. Like they, it just, it, it just looks like skin. It just looks like I have great skin under my eyes. And yeah, I, I absolutely do see what the hype's all about. It is expensive. I mean, both of these Kosas products are expensive. I would always wait for a sale for high-end products like this. I'm, I mean, I'm a bargain hunter. I'm gonna wait until it goes on sale. They did have a great Black Friday sale. I'm sure they'll have other sales on their website throughout the year. Sephora spring sale, I'm sure, is coming up. So I wouldn't recommend paying full price for any high-end product, honestly, but 
uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm really pleased with this concealer. I have the shade 1.5C, which is also a really good shade match. It does still lean a tiny bit yellow for a cool toned concealer, but I think this is the closest shade match in the line that they offer. The foundation, though, I don't feel like runs cool. So, oh, and in this I have the shade 110. All right, next up we have my top two powders. This is my like number one right now. This is the CoverGirl Clean Fresh powder. I love this powder so much. It's a very blurring powder and it's, it's just a very like kind of finely milled velvety sort of powder. It just makes my face both look and feel soft, but not dry. It does set everything really nicely. It does mattify, but it doesn't, it, it just never looks too dry or cakey. Now keep in mind I'm not typically super picky with powders. I, I feel like m most powders pretty much do the same thing, but this one really stands out to me for some reason. I really like it for my under eyes as well. I used to really prefer loose powders on my under eyes, but these days I'm more of a pressed powder person and you'll see my other favorite powder is also a pressed powder. I've just been in a pressed powder sort of mood recently and uh, I just, I can't recommend this highly enough. I think it is such a great formula from the drugstore. Um, I wear the shade Fair. And then my other favorite powder is also from the drugstore. This is the e.l.f. Sheer Tint Finishing Powder. I already have Pan on this. Um, this I wear in the shade Fair Light. Honestly, similar to the CoverGirl, a little bit more of like a creamy feeling powder. Like when I touch it, it feels a little bit more creamy, whereas the CoverGirl one feels more velvety, silky if that makes sense. <laughs> but on the skin, they do have a really similar effect. Very just natural looking, not drying. Um, I will say I don't like this one as much on my under eyes because I feel like it the, the shade is just a teeny tiny bit too dark for my under eyes. And I do feel like, yeah, this shade is a tiny bit darker than the CoverGirl one. So I feel like I can really only get away with this one on my face, but on my under eyes sometimes it can kind of cause my concealer to look a little bit too dark or like oxidize a little bit. Uh, but both of these are really, really great affordable powders. And I, I mentioned both of these actually in my drugstore makeup that feels high end. Both of these really do from the packaging to just the experience of the product. They just, they feel more expensive than they actually are. So highly recommend both of these, but Really, the CoverGirl one is my number one. Like, I could see myself repurchasing this when I run out of it. All right, so next for the category of bronzer slash contour, I've kind of been using them interchangeably lately. So one of these is a repeat winner from last time, and it's the BH Cosmetics Belgian Waffle Palette. I just love this so much. I have been using this a lot more recently, especially since I rolled it into my makeup basket. I love this super, super fair shade. It's just the perfect like foolproof bronzer if you've got really fair skin. It just never looks like too much. I don't have to worry about messing it up. I often will also mix it with the other two shades. Um, sometimes I'll wear the other shades on their own. All three of those shades are just great bronzers. Like honestly, if these were the only powder bronzers I had in my collection, I think I'd be happy because it's a few different undertones, a few different depths, and they're just very easy to work with. And I really went back and forth on which one to include for my number two bronzer. I really like all of my bronzers currently. I was so close to mentioning my Charlotte Tilbury airbrush bronzer in Fair, but then I was realizing that like honestly, the shade in this palette, this lightest shade, is so similar to the Charlotte Tilbury bronzer that I have in the shade Fair. I mean, if you look at them side by side, they really are very similar shades. And the Charlotte Tilbury one is just so expensive. And I don't know, I just, I do really love this bronzer, um, but I do feel like you can get a really similar effect from this palette. So anyway, <laughs> I it was very hard to decide, but I ended up actually deciding to go back to my Oma Beauty Double Take Contour and Highlight Stick, specifically the contour side is what we're talking about here. I wore this again today and I was just, it just reminded me why I love this product so much. This is such a great cream contour slash bronzer stick. Um, it kind of serves both purposes for me because it's just a great kind of neutral color. It's got some coolness to it so it works well as a true contour but I also like to use it to just sort of warm up my face. Um, even though it's not like a tremendously warm color. It is a super buttery, blendable, just easy to work with cream uh, contour. And um, I figured, you know, lately I've been kind of going back and forth between creams and powders. So I figured it would make sense to have one cream and one powder mentioned today. Last time, my two bronzer favorites were this and the Soul Body Bronzing Balm, which I'm still loving. But lately, I've just been more going for like a cooler tone bronzer. So that's why... 
I went with these two, but it was very hard to pick. I was realizing as I was going through my collection preparing for this video that I really do love the vast majority of the products in my collection. Like I could close my eyes and pick any product and be happy to use that product on a given day, you know? So I just think I'm at a really good place with my collection where I love so many things, even products that I've had for a long time. Some of them are new to me as well, but I don't know. I'm just feeling very happy with my makeup collection. So I think it's a good thing that it was hard to choose my top two in each category. It was also pretty hard to pick blush, but both of these do just stand out to me right now as ones that I've been reaching for a lot lately. And I just, I love both of these. I can wholeheartedly recommend both. Actually, one of them has been discontinued, sadly, but I'm still loving it. Um, this is the one that is currently in my project pan, and it's the Cloven Hallow Hydro Tint Serum Blush in Blossom. This was also mentioned in my last version of this video. Um, same, I love it now the same reason that I always have. It's just the perfect tone for me. Just this perfect light neutral pink, but it's not too sheer. Um, I was having some problems with my other, my flower blush balm liquid blush being too sheer, almost too subtle. This is subtle, but it still shows up. I can still build it up to be a little bit more intense if I want it to. It's just such a pretty blush. I, I'm so heartbroken that they discontinued this because it really is a special formula. I love it. I love it so much. I'm gonna miss it when it's gone, but I'm glad that I'm getting a ton of use out of it now. My other blush pick is a cream blush. This is the LYS Higher Standard Satin Matte Cream Blush in the shade Kindness. I love this. This is what I have on today. Just a great universally flattering peach color, I think. I don't think I had this in my collection last time I did this video. I actually got this at the same time that I got the ColourPop foundation. And it is a total favorite now. It's just very easy to apply. It it blend honestly I feel like the texture of this is actually kind of similar to the Oma contour stick. They both have that very just kind of buttery soft texture. Um, I like that it's completely matte. Lately I have been more opting for like matte cheek products for some reason. It's another just foolproof product. I feel like it goes with so many different looks and I definitely am a big fan of coral peachy blushes like this and uh, I think this is my favorite of all the coral and peachy blushes that I currently have in my collection. So. These are my two blush picks right now. Both of these just make me smile to look at. I just love them so much. So even though I just mentioned several cream cheek favorites, both of my highlighter picks right now are actually powder. These are just the two highlighters that I feel like are the ones I've been wanting to reach for over and over again recently. So the first one is the Aether Beauty Crushed Diamond Highlighter in the shade Pure Diamond Dust. So the other night I was just swatching my highlighters for fun and this was one of the ones that I swatched and I was just sitting there staring at the swatch of this for so long because this is such a stunning highlighter formula. Like it's got a very just just about transparent base but it has just the most beautiful almost glossy wet looking sheen to it that I cannot get enough of. Like this is just a delicious finish here. I really like do you see that? I almost want to put that on my eyelids. I feel like that would give like almost like a glossy eye effect. This has actually been in my makeup basket two different rounds in the past just like three months. I just wanted to roll it back in even though I have other powder highlighters that I would like to use. But this one just, I just keep wanting to use this one over and over again. I cannot believe how pretty it is. And I feel like for a while there it was going underused in my collection and nowadays I just can't get enough of it. The other highlighter favorite is my Nabla Skin Glazing Highlighter in Privilege. <sighs> this is what I have on my cheeks today. This is currently in my makeup basket and I've just kind of rediscovered all over again why I love this so much. This is another very special shade. It's kind of like this duochrome peachy golden highlight. Um, I don't feel like I have any other highlights in my collection that are quite this color. This has more of a soft, like, subtle sheen to it compared to the Aether. You can see that's the Aether, that's the Nabla. A little bit more subtle, but you can really kind of build this up if you do want a stronger highlight. It just always looks so good on my skin. It never accentuates dryness or texture, or it never, like, looks like a thick stripe of highlighter at all. I just feel like it's so, again, just effortless, easy to work with. Packaging is also stunning. I really want to pick up more in this Nabla skin glazing line. I really want to get the bronzer. I'm just, I'm hooked. I think this is such a beautiful formula. I absolutely can understand why so many people love this. So those are my top two highlighters at the moment. And both of these I've had for a while, but 
they're still just continuing to wow me every time I use them. All right, so we're getting kind of into the eye products. Let's quickly talk brows. Um, one of these has been a favorite for a long time. The other one is a slightly newer favorite, but the first one obviously is the ABH Dip Brow Pomade. I have been using the same pot of this for over two years now and still loving it. Still hasn't dried out. You can see that I've used a ton of it already. It's what I'm wearing in my brows today and it's just very reliable at this point. Um, yeah, still loving it. Don't have anything new to say about it, but that is definitely one of my top two brow products. And then I also wanted to mention my Urban Decay Brow Blade because I have really been loving this, especially the ink stain side. Now, this is the only brow marker or brow pen that I've tried, so I don't know how this compares to others. Next, I would be interested in trying maybe a drugstore option because I don't necessarily know if this if it's worth spending the high-end price tag on this but I did get this on sale for like basically a drugstore price anyway so this is a dual-ended pencil and ink stain they call it the pencil is just kind of your standard fine tip pencil the pencil side is fine I do find it a little bit too warm for my brows but it, it works just fine I have the shade taupe trap um, so typically I like to fill in the tail of my brows with the pencil or sometimes I'll fill it in with my ABH pomade And then I really like to use the ink stain side this very fine tip kind of brush tip pen To draw hair like strokes in kind of the front of my brows So I really like how I can just be very minimal with how Much product I'm putting in my brows with this I can just do a few kind of strategic strokes there at the front and I'm able to get the structure that I want, and it looks like real hairs. I feel like this type of product is the best way to truly mimic the look of like a super fine brow hair. You know, really skinny pencils like this can do a decent job, but I just don't think that gives you the same like true hair-like stroke as a brow pen. It definitely took me a little while to get the hang of this, how much pressure to apply. If you do apply too much pressure, sometimes you can get like too much of it, and then you have to kind of smooth it out with your finger, but now that I've gotten the hang of this, I really love the way this looks in my brows. Like pretty much every time I wear this, I have a good brow day. So it is a new kind of discovery for me, a new slight change of preferences. I'm still loving my old reliable um, brow pomade, but also kind of really into the brow markers these days. So once I run out of this, I might want to try a drugstore one. Let me know if you have any drugstore favorites, especially if you're near my brow color and you tend to wear taupe, but you don't like it to be too warm. Let me know. I'm thinking about maybe trying the Milani one because I think I've heard good things about that one. But those are my current two brow favorites. Two categories I'm not doing are eyelid primers just because I don't really care that much about eyelid primers. I'm currently using the Urban Decay Primer Potion, but I feel like they all kind of work the same. And then I'm also not doing setting spray. I just don't have a current favorite setting spray in my collection. Hoping to change that soon. I do have a couple on the way that I just ordered from Ulta that I'm really excited to try. So maybe in my next version of this video, I'll have some new setting spray favorites to share. But let's go ahead and talk eyeshadow palettes. So this was really hard. Uh, one of them, well, one of them was easy, and it's the ABH Morvina palette. This was also in my last version of this video. This is just my favorite palette. It has stood the test of time for over a year now, and it's just, the longer I've had it, the more and more I love it. This year, I'm actually kind of treating this as a pan that palette, um, so I'm just kind of keeping it in my pan those eyeshadow series and always having at least one shade in this palette that I'm working on. Currently, that shade is volatile, which is what I'm wearing in, like, my crease today. I feel like anytime I wear this palette, I really like how my eyeshadow looks that day, and it just suits my skin tone really well. Um, my favorite shade is rose gold. I love putting that all over the lid and then putting like love and volatile in the crease Maybe a little wild child this pink like in the inner corner of my eye It just they're very flattering tones. It is still my favorite palette now My other favorite palette because we're really talking about like my current favorites products that I've really been reaching for a lot recently And this one might surprise you But when I was looking at all my palettes and thinking about what I've been reaching for the most lately I actually landed on my perfusion mobs palette. This is a very affordable palette and especially, we just got out of like kind of like the Valentine's Day season. <laughs> it did seem like a whole season. I do think part of the reason why this is a current favorite is because one of the shades was in my pan, those eyeshadows. So I was just naturally reaching into this more often than I otherwise would. But as a result of that, it just kind of reminded me how much I love this palette. I kind of fell in love with it all over again. Um, and I feel like lately I'm loving it more than ever before. The shimmers in here are so 
beautiful. Like, just, they mimic high-end shimmers, in my opinion. Like, I mean, they've got this almost wet look to them, especially this one right here, this Ooh La La shade. It's got kind of some, like, glittery flecks in it that translate as almost just, like, this wet glimmer on the eyes. It almost makes it look like you're wearing, like, a liquid shadow or something. Just so pretty. I'll go ahead and swatch those other two as well. I'm just consistently blown away by those. And also, the shimmer that I hit pan on in my pan those eyeshadows is the shade Opal here. This makes a beautiful lid shade, inner corner shade. Um, that's that one right there. But it also makes a beautiful cheekbone highlight. And then so many of these shades also work great as a blush. I really like wearing Kindly as a blush, this kind of like beigey rose color here. Yeah, just a really gorgeous palette. Because the pans are a little bit bigger than your average eyeshadow, you can totally multitask these as face or cheek products as well. So I've just really grown to appreciate this palette. I'm so glad that I have it. Can't believe it's only $5. It's outstanding. I, I really can't believe the price. I've tried other Profusion palettes in this packaging. Didn't love either of those actually, Spectrum and Pastels. And the main reason I didn't like those I think is because they were all matte palettes. And Profusion's matte formula, the mattes in here are actually really good, but in general their matte formula doesn't wow me as much as their shimmer formula. But I think because this palette has a good handful of shimmers in it, as well as mattes that do perform really well, I just... I can't, I can't get over how good it is. So I'm actually kind of surprised to be mentioning this today, but if I'm really thinking about like, what have I been reaching into the most so far this year? It really, I think it's these two. Alrighty, so next up for the category of eyeliners, I have been big into pencil eyeliners recently. So both of my top two are pencils. The first one is the NYX Epic Wear Liner Sticks. I actually just ordered three more shades of this because I love it so much. This is the shade Rose Gold. This is one of the best pencil eyeliners I've ever tried. I even like it better than the other one that I'm about to mention that's high end. It really does kind of lock into place. I like wearing this on the lower lash line. It also wears well in the waterline. I don't often wear liners in my waterline, but this is one of the best I've found for the waterline. By the end of the day, about 50% of it is still in my waterline, which usually it's 0%, so <laughs> that's pretty good in my book. Um, it is the best that I've found. It also comes in so many fun colors. They've got some, you know, neutral colors like black and brown and other kind of similar shades in those families. And then they also have a ton of fun colors. The ones I ordered, I ordered a periwinkle, like an icy blue and an orange one. I'm so excited to get them. Um, I just, yeah, I've been really into colorful eyeliners lately. So that is why my number two is a colorful liner. This is the Urban Decay 24-7 Glide On Eye Pencil in Overdrive. I was especially talking about this a ton around the holidays because this made a beautiful, like, kind of holiday green color. It's this ever so slightly teal kind of emerald green. And it just reminds me of the color of an evergreen tree. I actually don't like this formula quite as much as the NYX Epic Wear, but when I checked, the NYX Epic Wear didn't have a shade quite like this. So that's why I got this. But the Urban Decay 24-7 eyeliners, I'd recommend waiting to get them on sale. I think I got this on sale for like 11 bucks, which I think is a fair price for it but I wouldn't pay full price because I don't find even these to be as budge proof as the NYX ones, but it does come in a really, really beautiful color selection. I also have a royal blue in the shade Roxy. But this one you guys have heard me talking about a lot in recent months, so I feel like out of all my eyeliners, these are the two that I feel like are my current kind of top two. All right, we're gonna skip the category of mascaras just because I don't feel like I've discovered any new favorites. I'm currently using the Milk Makeup Rise Mascara. Don't really like it, it's kind of flaky, but I'll report back when I do have a favorite. But let's go ahead and chat lips. So I have a new lip liner favorite and my top two are actually both from the same brand. These are from Koki. I did not know it was possible for me to love a lip liner as much as I love these. These are practically waterproof, which is something I've never encountered in a lip liner. Most lip liner formulas that I've tried, they might be long wearing, but they're not going to be like budge proof. But when I first got these, I had some swatches on my hand of these and other liners in my collection, and these would not budge from my hand. Like even after washing my hands, these stuck around. <laughs> so um, these are just amazingly long wearing and budge proof and my two favorite shades are both kind of similar to each other but this is just the kind of lip liner color that I've been reaching for the most lately. I've been really into these kinds of like light beigey cool toned 
nude kinds of shades. The one I have on today is the shade Nude. This is just a beautiful like brown toned nude. I like that it's not too orange. It's a great like lip contouring kind of color, which is what I've been really into lately. I've really just been liking a color like this to line my lips and kind of to contour like the edges of my lips. And then I'll go in with like a lighter lip gloss all over or like a lighter nude. So that's the first color that I've been loving. And then I've also been loving Warm Nude. I think this is the one that Kelly Gooch really likes. This one is just a little bit pinker than Nude, but another great kind of My Lips But Better nude shade. Um, yeah, I love the packaging of these. They've got this like sort of grippy section right here. Um, I just think these are fantastic. Like more people should be talking about these lip liners because they are the best lip liners I've found, drugstore or high-end. I've never encountered a lip liner that was this budge proof before. All right, then for lipstick, I've got one colorful shade and one nude shade. These are both drugstore. The first one is the CoverGirl 24 Hour Matte Lipstick in the shade Thrill Seeker. I do really love the shade of this and I wore this a lot in February because I was just really into like pinks and reds in February and this is a great kind of cross between pink and red, but it's really the formula of this that I'm so amazed by. I mean, look how rich and opaque and vibrant that is. And this is such a great alternative to a liquid lipstick. If you like a matte lip color, but you're kind of over the feeling of a dry liquid lipstick on your lips, this will kind of dry down. It's not 100% transfer proof, but it's just about as transfer proof as most liquid lipsticks. But it wears so much better and it's so much less drying than a liquid lipstick. Obviously, you're not going to want to put any matte lipstick on like super dry lips to begin with. You're going to want to make sure your lips are hydrated and prepped really well and they're not, that they're not like, you know, peeling and dry. But, but I just love this formula. I don't think I've ever encountered a bullet lipstick quite like this and I'm really tempted to pick up more shades. Like it wears well through eating, drinking. It's just a great formula. And then my other favorite lipstick is from the e.l.f. Seriously Satin line. This is the shade Cream. In my original video, I mentioned the shades Nectar and Persimmon, and I actually didn't mention Cream, but lately Cream has been such a favorite. I actually wanna put on a little bit of this right now. I just love this lip color for just the center of my lips. It is a very light nude, so I don't like to wear this shade on its own, but just kind of popped in the center. I feel like, again, I like I said before, I've been really into that kind of like contoured lip where I've got a slightly deeper lip liner all around, a lighter nude in the center, and then I'll top that with like a nice milky pink gloss or nude my lips but better type of gloss. That's been my go-to lip look recently. And this lipstick is just perfect for that. And of all three of the e.l.f. Seriously Satin lipsticks that I own, I have this one, Nectar and Persimmon. This is the one that I've used the most of. I've also had it for a little bit longer than the other two. But you can see, especially when I like twist it all the way down, I've used a good bit of this. So this is something that I feel like I could probably pan even without putting it in a project pan because I just use it so often. Even though I didn't think of it as a favorite even a few months ago, when I look at all my lipsticks, this is one of my most used. So I think that kind of speaks for itself. So the final category that I have to share with you today is glosses. And one of these is another repeat from last time. This is the e.l.f. Lip Plumping Gloss in the shade Pink Cosmo. Um, I'm really excited to roll this into my project pan soon. This is going to be the next one that I work on using up. You can see I've already used quite a bit of it, but this is just a beautiful milky pink gloss. It's kind of a sheer formula. I really like this plumping gloss formula from e.l.f. It is a little bit sticky, but I don't mind a slightly sticky gloss because I feel like those are the ones that tend to kind of stick around longer on my lips. They don't just like melt into my lips as quickly as some others. I like wearing this on its own. I like pairing it with a nude lip liner. And yeah, I mean, it's one of my most used glosses in my collection. And then my other favorite, it's funny because I've had this in my collection the longest out of all my lip glosses. But in my last top two in every category, my two favorites were this one and the ColourPop gloss in Champagne Mommy, which I have since used up. I did love that gloss, so uh, don't get me wrong. But it wasn't until probably December of 2021 that I rediscovered my love for this one. This is the Milani Keep It Full Nourishing Lip Plumper in the shade Soft Rose. I had just kind of gone a while without using this for whatever reason, and I picked it back up in December, and I couldn't believe how good it looked. I was like, why have I not been using this every single day for the past, like, year? Because this is truly my lips but better. Like, this is the color of my lips 
in a gloss. It is very pigmented. It's not as sheer as the e.l.f. Lip Plumping Gloss, but it's just kind of made me realize there's something very magical about having a lip gloss that matches your lip color because it just looks so natural, but so like put together and polished at the same time. So it's really brought new meaning to the phrase my lips but better because that's really what this is. It does have a little bit of that sort of minty feel on your lips because it is a plumping gloss. It feels a little bit tingly, but it's it's not painful at all. I'm actually very close to using this up, but once this runs out and I've used up a few of my other glosses, I do plan to repurchase because it's just that good. Like this is probably going to be a holy grail for many years to come even over the e.l.f. plumping gloss, I think. So, can't believe I was sleeping on this for so long even though I had it in my collection that whole time. It makes me sad that I wasn't appreciating this for so long, but now I wear it like almost every day. <laughs> if I'm wearing a nude lip, I'm probably putting this on in some capacity, even if it's just kind of like on the center of my lips. So those are my current top two in every category. I had a lot of fun revisiting this video, just kind of as a way to update you on my current favorites in each category. Let me know if you want me to continue doing these in the future. Um, but if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you've not already. I'd love to see you again soon. And hopefully I will talk to you again very soon in my next video. Bye.